Yo, what up, Burst Nation? This is Dr. Jared Williams. I'm a concierge dental surgeon in Houston, Texas, and it's an honor and a privilege to talk to you today about do we really need our wisdom teeth and are they gonna cause our teeth to crowd? Well, it really depends on the case. I know you're like, well, wait a second, I want some answers. Well, I'm gonna give them to you, but I'm gonna treat you like you're my patient because I believe the best doctor is the one that you look at in the mirror on a daily basis. The reason why I tread so lightly on this topic is because in some camps they're like, I don't want you taking out those wisdom teeth. And then in the other camp they're like, all the wisdom teeth need to go. And I don't practice like that. I believe that there's a case by case situation on all facets. And if the patient knows all the information and not swayed one way or the other, they're gonna make the best decision. And if they don't, it's not our job to force them, force them <laughs> to do what we want them to do. So what I'm gonna do is this, I'm gonna show you a couple of cases and I'm gonna leave the articles down at the bottom so that you can research them on your own and feel free to reach out to me at any time. All right, let's do it. All right, so before we jump into the case, you generally have four wisdom teeth, two at the top, two at the bottom, and they can come in sideways, up and down, backwards, at the roots, at the crowns, all around, you know what I mean? So let's jump into it. All right, so wisdom teeth are kind of funny because they can come in in any way, form, or fashion. And the reason why we generally take out wisdom teeth is because there's just not enough space in the jaw. And when there's not enough space, something's gotta give. All right, so let's jump in this case. All right, so as you can see, we have four wisdom teeth, and I'll map these out for you. You have one here, which is number one, 16, 17, and 32. And when I look at these wisdom teeth, what I like to do is let the patient see them so they know what's actually going on in their jaw. Because if they can see it, they can make a better decision on how this will work. So couple first things first, I'm gonna get the patient's chief complaint, pain scale, medical history, and start probing around and seeing what's going on. Now, in this case, I don't see anything that really pops out at me to say, hey, these teeth are urgently needed and come out. And what I mean by that is this, there's no significant cavities, there's no cysts, there's no black spots on the x-rays, and so that's good. However, when I see a tooth that's horizontally impacted, which means it's sitting sideways, um, coming up against the adjacent tooth, that tends to be concerning because bacteria is very, very tiny. It can find those little crevices and slide all the way down and just sit there and cause an inflammatory response. And when there's inflammation, bone starts to get away from that as fast as possible. In this particular situation, I'm pretty sure if you were to probe this area gently without anesthetic, you'll be able to comfortably go down about five to six millimeters. And we know that anytime you probe and it's greater than three, which is four or greater, then we have disease. And so I'll let a patient know, hey, I'm probing and I'm getting some pockets back here. It doesn't look like you're going to be able to manage this. It's probably a good idea to get these out. All right. And by giving that patient that information, they get to make the determination. Do I want these teeth to um, stay in my mouth or I don't want them gone? The good thing about this is that on this particular patient, this patient had ortho. And because they have a permanent retainer, which is this right here, these teeth probably aren't gonna move. But we're not moving, we're not removing these wisdom teeth based upon the crowding, we're moving it because we don't wanna cause or allow caries or distal bone loss to occur on the 12 year molars because we're leaving in the third molars or the 18 year molars. All right, let's jump into another case. See if it'll make a little more sense. All right, so as you can see this case, their wisdom teeth are coming in all over the place. You have one here, one here, one here, and one here. And when that happens, it's just like, well, this is a little bit more obvious. You can see the wisdom teeth on the top right is really digging into that 12-year um, molar, just like the 30-year molar on the bottom right and bottom left. And when that happens, I like to tell the patient, when a tooth is digging in like that, sometimes it causes a cavitation on the distal side of that tooth, and you won't just lose your wisdom teeth, but if you keep them any longer, then you're gonna probably end up losing that 
um, second molar as well, along with the third molar. So now you're not just looking at four teeth to remove, you're looking at a possibility of eight teeth to be removed. And as you can see, I do the same thing over and over with each patient. And so the main thing here is this, give them the pros, the cons and alternatives and let them make the decision. It's not about which right or which wrong because that's relative because like I said earlier, this is a touchy topic and there's multiple schools of thought. But one thing that won't change is you taking the time to sit with your patient and give them all the outcomes that can potentially occur and let them make the decision. So there you have it guys. I'm Dr. Jared Williams and I hope that you are able to understand that you really need your wisdom teeth if you need them. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And remember, my focus is for you, yeah you, to smile after surgery. Make it a great one. Yo, what up, Burst Nation? Burst Nation? Burst Nation? Yo, what up, Burst Nation? Yeah, you!